Hello and welcome. Wherever you are in the world today, thank you for joining us for the Rise Traveler, unpacking conversations of sustainable travel. We are here to talk to eco-minded and socially conscious travelers, diversity and inclusion specialists, wildlife conservationists, environmental activists, and anyone using travel as a way to uplift and inspire. Together, we will go a step beyond the Instagram-ready world of travel and take a look at how travel can be a source of growth and development for all people and all communities. And now, here's your host, Amy Hager. Today, I'm excited to have Justine Yu, one of our senior advisors who is focusing on our DE&I committee. And as some of you may know, because the Rise Travel Institute is new. So our senior advisors volunteer their time to really help guide our committees and to guide as we put together this beautiful organization and educational programs for our students. And so Justine, I wanna kick off today's conversation on why did you join the Rise Travel Institute at the very start of the organization? Yeah, thank you for having me first and foremost, Amy. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and so I decided to join RISE right at the get-go. I know that it's a very new organization, um, but that was actually the part that was really appealing to me because um, just as for context, I'm the senior advisor for RISE and my focus is really overseeing the work of the diversity, equity and inclusion committee. And that was really important to me after speaking with Vinci, who's of course the founder of RISE, hearing her speak about how important it is for her to have this committee from the very beginning to be really intentional and mindful of the practices that every like everything that rise does you know from the curriculum from the policies that you have in terms of um hiring or or having volunteers on board all of these different aspects i think it's really important to have that at the beginning of starting an organization as opposed to you know, you've built up this big org and suddenly it's really, really difficult to undo a lot of right. these issues. And so I was really interested in getting started from the very beginning. I love that. And I love, um, you know, obviously I, you know, jumped in right away too. And what I love is the intention that is set in building this organization. And so you play such an important part. And I thank you so much for volunteering your time, which kind of leads me to my next question of, you know, what do you do? What do you do outside of RISE? Tell us a little bit more about your background and your work, Justine. Yes. Yeah, so I am currently working as a freelance marketing and communication strategist. My focus is primarily on working with social impact organizations and travel organizations and doing all of this with uh, an anti-oppressive, anti-oppression lens. And so uh, I'm currently working as the communications lead at Wonderful, which for those of you who don't know, is a global travel and lifestyle brand that specializes in helping really all women travel the world. And so they're my anchor client right now. And I've been doing a lot of work um, with Wonderful. Um, and yeah, that's been my my primary focus over the last, I guess it's almost like two years now that I've been working with Wonderful. But yeah, definitely working with a, a number of other clients in the social impact space um, to move their message along and their cause along. I love that. And so then share with us, what's something that you're doing right now that you're really excited about? So I'll tell you um, something that I've been working on that's actually not related to my freelance career, um, but it's a side project that I have been working on for the last couple of years. In 2018, I actually started a magazine and a community called Living Hyphen. And it's a magazine that focuses on exploring the experiences of people who live in between cultures. And so, for example, I am Filipina Canadian. I was born in the Philippines and moved to Toronto, Canada when I was four years old and um, have always been really interested in understanding my roots or learning more about my roots and how that meshes with the culture here in Canada. And so that's something that I've been working on for the last couple of years. And this year we're putting out our second issue of the magazine. And so that has been my main focus. And while it is a side project, it's definitely <laughs> has taken up a lot of my 
full-time time. So (laughs) that sounds really fun and exciting. Is it, is it a digital magazine or do you also print this? It's actually print. And so for those of you who can actually physically see me, that's the the two faces over there. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. So it's print. Yes. So it is a, it's a print magazine that comes out. um, Well, it's supposed to be annual, but uh, it's a lot hard harder than I expected it to be. So it's taking us a little bit longer to get out our second issue, but yeah, it's trucking along. I love it. That's so much fun. I love a good passion project and really, especially the theme that I was picking about you is you've really taken marketing communications, which a lot of us have that background and that foundation in our life. And you're really like finding specific niches that speak to your soul to cover and communicate about. So I love that about what you've done in your career and kind of what you're doing with us with Rise and also with your magazine. I want to talk a little bit more, though, about you and personally. So as you've traveled yeah. and as you've explored, you know, has there been moments um, in your travels that have created a positive impact in the area that you visited or the lives that you've touched while you've been visiting somewhere? So I've been thinking about this question. Um, and. You know, I'm wary to say or to outright um, give an answer on like how I've positively affected a place, yeah. but I will say that I, I previously to my freelance work, I was working with another nonprofit called Operation Groundswell, and they are an experiential education organization. We, I still say we, I was there for nearly seven years, even though this was a while ago, but they're yeah. still like, <laughs> still part of my heart and still part of who I am. And so um, I still say we. So we would um, have groups of youth, typically from Canada or the United States, and we would go abroad to a number of different places around the world to learn about specific social justice issues. And so, for example, we would go to Guatemala and learn about um, environmental sustainability, or we would go to India and learn about gender rights there. And we had a curriculum where we would actually meet with local educators, local activists, and nonprofit organizations, um, artists, anyone and everyone who was doing work in that particular social justice issue. And it was really important for us to meet with these orgs or these individuals so that these youth from Canada or the U.S. or the West could see and learn from these local activists and to see how so much work is actually already being done on the ground. And so that I think is the most impactful work that I've done in terms of travel. And while it's not necessarily impact, I think our impact, to be honest, was more profound on the travelers who were going abroad, as opposed to maybe the local activists, because those activists are, they are badasses and they have been doing this work you know, long before any of these youth went abroad and they are continuing to that to do that work every single day afterwards. And so I would say in terms of the travel world, that is probably the most positive work that I have done in my life so far. I would say that sounds absolutely amazing. Yes. So, um, well, so then on the flip side, is there maybe a time that you made a less positive decision and share with us, what did you learn from that? And tell us more about that experience. Yeah. So, Hmm. Let me think. I think there are a lot of instances when we do travel that we actually don't recognize our impact and the long-term consequences that may come out of that. And so one of the, negative impacts I think that I have personally had is that I once went on a um, all-inclusive trip to Mexico and I was at a resort and I don't know how much of that experience actually gave back to the local community and I distinctly remember being you know one of the programs that were a part of this all inclusive experience was this um, performance by 
was supposed to be, I'm guessing, a local um, indigenous communities in Mexico. And to be honest, I don't know how, how quote unquote authentic that actually was and how much of it was actually just a performance to entertain you know, these foreigners to give them, again, this quote unquote, authentic experience of Mexico. And so, you know, I'm always conscious when I'm traveling of trying to support the local economy and to really make sure that the money that I'm spending as much as possible goes back to that local community. And to be honest, I don't know how much of that I accomplished on that particular trip. Right. And I I think what I'm hearing too is, you know, now that you've thought through it and when you are planning your trips, you're now thinking about them differently. And through that experience, you learned that you want to make that better, bigger impact on the locality that you're visiting and making sure that the money goes to the people who are living there. And maybe not, you know, not, not some organization or a richer um, company. I totally get what you're saying. And, you know, I think that's a lot of it, it was probably so easy, right? All inclusive sounds so easy. I oh, yeah. And I'm done. But and being- you relax and you, right? yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm sure <laughs> but that's the, the, sorry, I was just going to say, I think that's the, the thing that I'm trying to be a lot more conscious of when I'm making my travel de- decisions, especially purchasing, is that convenience often comes at the cost of supporting these local communities and actually positively impacting these places that I'm choosing to go to. And so trying to think a little bit more and being a lot more mindful of those decisions that I make when I'm purchasing, um, purchasing an experience, I guess. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. We get to choose what experiences we want and being more thoughtful as we're choosing those, I think is a great takeaway from, from that Mm -hmm. experience. So then tell me, have you ever met anyone during your travels that really impacted you in a way that you never could have imagined when you first met them? There are a few people that come to mind, but I'll mention someone who I guess is an active presence in my life. Um, I, on one of these programs that I embarked on with Operation Groundswell, that nonprofit that I was telling you about earlier, um, I went abroad and it was a group of about 13 people. Um, We went to East Africa, to Kenya, Uganda, and Rwanda. And we were working with a number or learning from a number of different organizations about um, their their work um, with youth in these different local communities in in this area. And one of the people on that trip, her name is Leah. And she's someone who I didn't know previously. I had met her at the hostel. Um, I had met her at the hostel here in Nairobi, um, which was our first stop. And she was part of that group. And she is someone who has just become such a positive influence in my life. And her friendship is one that I really value because she's someone who is just as interested in this work around social justice and anti-oppression as I am. She is now, you know, doing her studies in global health and has just taught me so much about the world. And she's someone who I have ongoing discussions, critical conversations about anti-oppression, about social justice and about global inequities, which is really important to me. So yeah, little love to Leah if she's love listening to, to this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to go back and take her after after our discussion today. I um, well, okay, so I, I want to kind of wrap up our conversation. I've got two more questions that I want to ask you, and this is like one of my favorite questions to ask all of our all of our members of the Rise Travel Institute. Um, look into your crystal ball, Justine. How do you see the future of travel, of the travel industry of tomorrow? So for the travel industry of tomorrow, it is a very tough one. I'll say that first and foremost, especially given the circumstances that we find ourselves in now, you know, for the first time and maybe ever travel is at a complete standstill. Um, And so I think there's going to be first off, like a lot of hardship that that comes um, as we pull ourselves out of this pandemic. But 
what I feel hopeful about is that we are now, now more than ever having these conversations about equity and inclusion and anti-oppression in a way that I don't think in, you know, the last decade of my work, I don't think we've, I have personally experienced, I don't think I've seen such fervor or such passion or such intention in this work, you know, even with Rise right now, Vinci having this, this committee and making sure that we have practices that are anti-oppressive from the get-go, I think that is radical and something that gives me a lot of hope and that in the future, I'm hoping to see the travel industry being a lot more mindful, a lot more conscious about their impact on local communities abroad, on the environment as a whole, and even on communities back home where we are quote unquote from. And so that's at least the hope. Um, And yeah, yeah. That sounds beautiful. And I love how you're able to really clearly explain that, which just shows us that it's really clear in your crystal ball. So it's something we can work (laughs) for. So Justine, last question for today. For today, (laughs) what legacy do you want to leave behind in this world? That's a big question. (laughs) Honestly, I have dedicated a lot of my career in this space of social justice. And so all of the decisions that I have made, this decision to join RISE is all in service of trying to make the world more equitable and just. And so I hope that, you know, hopefully a long time from now is when I'll I'll be gone, but I hope that's the legacy that I leave, you know, that all of the work that I have done um, has made the world a little bit more equitable, a little bit more just. I know it's a very long road and I will not necessarily be the beneficiary of all of the, you know, the work that we're doing now, but I certainly hope that that is the legacy that I leave. That's beautiful. Definitely. Thank you for sharing with us and thank you for joining us today. And um, I look forward to working with you more on our programming and really creating this larger community of Rise Travelers. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. I look forward to it too. (laughs) No, and I mean, that brings us to the end of our journey today. And if you liked what you've heard and you would want to hear more, please, please subscribe, like, comment. We would love to hear from you. And feel free to follow us at Rise Travel Institute on Facebook or on Instagram. And then over on Twitter, be a Rise Traveler. Here at the Rise Travel Institute, we believe travel is a powerful tool for positive transportation formative change. And if you are a college student planning to study abroad, a young professional thinking about that gap year, or really anyone who is wanting to travel the world in a sustainable way, we encourage you to head on over to risetravelinstitute.org for more information on our educational courses. And we'll be back soon with another episode. But until then, keep roaming, keep learning, and continue to be a Rise Traveler. Thank you. This podcast is an extension of the Rise Travel Institute, a 501c3 nonprofit committed to empowering young travelers through educational programs, research, study tours, and scholarships. Visit risetravelinstitute.org to learn more.